Hi everybody, Patrick here from EngineeringShock.com, ElectronicLessons.com, and PaintballProps.com. Today I'm going to talk about the 4x4x4 LED cube assembly process. Uh, this is a Kickstarter campaign that just ended, and I'm going to show you how to put one together. Now the AC adapter that is included with some reward tiers is not shown here, but we'll talk about that uh, later on in the video. Let me just talk about the basic components. When you receive your kit, you'll have all of the components required to build the processor board and a bag of 64 LEDs. Now, this bag of 64 LEDs also has four screws and four nuts. So we're actually going to start with the LEDs and we're going to get back to these components a little bit later on, but let me introduce the other components. You have your custom PCB, 16 100 ohm resistors, four 10k ohm resistors, a 5 millimeter power jack, a piece of wire, four NPN transistors, a 7805 5 volt regulator, 28 pin dip socket, 28 pin processor programmed with the code, um, a, an, a single pole double throw switch, a single 0.1 microfarad electrolytic capacitor, or sorry, ceramic capacitor, and a 100 microfarad electrolytic capacitor. So we're going to assemble the processor board a little bit later, but first things first, we're going we're gonna to talk about how to start with your uh, LED cube. We're not going to assemble the LED cube, we're going to assemble parts of the LED cube. So let's open up our bag of LEDs. So what we have here are four M3 nuts and four M3 screws, and those are going to act as standoffs. And we've got 64 red 5 millimeter LEDs. Now what we want to do is we want to add, we want to add legs to this, uh, because when we add legs as standoffs to the um, to the to the uh, PCB, it makes it, a, it makes it much easier for us to use the onboard LED template. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one nut for each uh, each corner hole, pop it in, and I'm going to put the nut all the way on. Now, one thing to know: you don't have to make it tight because we're going to be uh, removing this quite often. Uh, depending on which LEDs you're using to make things easier until we're the done the entire set. So uh, place your standoffs on all four corners and then we'll talk about the LED assembly. As you can see, I've added my standoffs. Now, before we start putting our LEDs in, here's something we want to consider. Some LEDs, some 5mm LEDs are different. No, ma no two manufacturers are the same. Some LEDs you'll find fit in perfectly, like these red ones. Um, some you'll find are a bit loose, some you'll find only go in halfway. Now, as long as every LED is going in the same amount, or the, the same distance down into the board, and so it's even on a uh, horizontal plane, you're all good. Um, but keep in mind that, again, some manufacturers uh, are not so diligent in having 5 millimeter uh, diameters. So, uh, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to take four LEDs at a time and do some soldering. Now one thing you have to know about each LED, I'm hoping you can see this, is the LED has a long wire or a long lead and a short lead. The long lead is positive, the short lead is negative. The long lead is also known as an anode and the short lead is also known as the cathode. But we're just going to refer to these as positive and negative. Now we're going to start on the left here. We can do these one at a time or we can do four at a time. I'm going to do it one at a time because I just find it easier that way, but you can populate all 16 LEDs into these holes at once if you want. You're going to want a small flathead screwdriver, preferably, not required, but preferably, and a fine tip soldering iron. Now what we want to do is, and I'll show a close up of this in a minute, we're going to place four LEDs in these four slots and we're going to have we're going to have the short lead, the negative, facing right, and the long lead, the positive, facing left. I'm hoping you can see this. I'm going to move over to the right hand side. I hope I don't block the view or cast too much of a shadow. What I'm going to want to do here is, again, all of the short leads are facing the right hand side of the board, and the long leads are facing left. You don't want them up or down. You want short, right, long, left. And what we're going to want to do is you can do this many different ways is you're going to want to bend the short lead down to the next LED. You might want to actually start at the bottom. So bend the first negative short lead straight down, straight down. Now what you're going to want to do is the next LED up. Again, I'm hoping that you can see this all right. So we're going to want to bend 
that LED down to touch the other negative. The idea here is we want all of the negatives to be touching each other. And you want to make sure that there's no shorting to the positives. So right now we've got all of our positives, our long leads on the left facing right up and we've got our short leads all been straight down touching each other. This is quite nice. Now this is where you might want to have the screwdriver. You can use a screwdriver just to hold it in place if you want. Again, this also depends on how well the LEDs fit into the uh, relative holes. But the idea is now you're going to want to add solder, a nice solder joint here to connect this LED and this LED negative, here, here, and here. So the idea, the idea is, is as long as you have good solder joints and there's no shorting, once you're done that, you can pop it out. You, and if you and the idea, uh, well, actually, we'll get there in a second. What I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the video. I'm going to solder these four points. I'm going to show it to you, and then we're going to remove it. One example, I'll show you me soldering, and I'm hoping that you can see this. I'm going to try not to block the camera view. So we don't have to solder anything at the top. For we have to make our first joint here. You might want to add a little bit of solder to tin to tin your uh, soldering iron. Now, just to make sure that that is straight down, we're going to use the flathead screwdriver just to push that lead down and apply a little bit of heat. Pops into place. Nice solder joint. Now, we'll do the same thing to the next one. Also, while I'm soldering, keep in mind that you don't need to use this template. If you Google 4x4x4 four by four by, or four X four X four LED cube template, there should be many there, and you can, you can actually easily modify the size of them in Microsoft Paint or in another uh, picture editor. So I'm almost done here. It's very easy. Add a little bit of solder. Make sure that the lead is straight down. Hunky-dory. Now what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to create 16 of those. You can simply leave that in there if you want and start on the next, on the next uh, set of holes. Uh, you can use these, you can do four at a time, or you can pop that out and use that again. If you are going to do four at a time, I suggest doing one, then populating more LEDs, then soldering that uh, line of LEDs, then populating the next, and so on and so on. Because depending on how well these fit, these aren't just going to pop out. What we're going to need to do is we're going to need to loosen the, this, the nuts, and once they're loosened down to the bottom, we don't want to remove them, we just want to push down and it should, should pop out. I'll give you a, demonstrated, a demonstration of that in just one second. But first of all, let's test our LED string. On most multimeters, there should be a diode tester. On this Fluke multimeter, I have to change it to the continuity tester. And as you can see, there's a diode symbol right there. But uh, there's a continuity symbol in white, which means that right now we're testing continuity. We're testing for shorts. So what I have to do to get to diode testers, I have to press shift. Now we are in uh, diode tester mode. So in order to test a diode, we want to place our positive lead on the positive uh, pin of, a, of an LED and our negative on the negative of the LED. So the uh, black on the cathode and red on the anode. So all of our, uh, all of our negatives, our cathodes are connected together. So if I touch my black to the common cathode and I touch my positive, to uh, the top LED's positive or anode, it lights up. It works. And that's how you easily test to make sure that all four LEDs are working and that they're all soldered together. Pretty easy, huh? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly loosen all of these, all of the nuts. I'm not going to remove the nuts. I'm just going to loosen them down to the bottom and then I'm going to push down and that should pop out. So hopefully you can see this. Right now, all of the nuts and screws are, you know, barely connected. They're not removed, but they're barely connected. Now what I can do is I can quickly pop it. Comes out has one nice LED string. Now if you have one that's a little bit bent, you just have to gently fiddle with it. You can use a pair of needle nose pliers to make sure that everything is hunky-dory, make sure it's perfectly straight, and really, the quality of your, your cube is going to depend entirely on your patience, uh, and of course, your soldering skill level. Uh, the, the tough part of the LED cube is coming up. Well, what we're gonna wanna do is, I'm gonna skip ahead, I'm gonna make 16 of these, I'm going to remove these four screws, and I'm gonna start showing you how to build the rest of the board. 
Uh, and then, once we're, build it, we're done building the rest of the board, we'll commence on taking all 16 of these um, four rings of LEDs and connecting them together, and it will make a cube. So, tr just trust me, I'm going to be very, very detailed. We're going to go through everything piece by piece. Now, the reason why we did our LED strings first is because it's easier to do the LED strings of four while there's no components populated. But, you're going to want to create your cube once all of the components are populated. So first of all, we're going to do our resistors. We're going to solder our resistors into place. Uh, resistors have no polarity, so as long as you solder them into the right footprint, you're not going to have any problem. Just make sure that you have nice solid solder joints and that there are no shorts. So there are 16 100 ohm uh, resistors and four 10k ohm resistors. Let's do the 16, um, the 16 100 ohm resistors first. They go into all these slots. They are labeled 100R, all 16 of them. There's eight on the top labeled 100R and eight on the bottom. So what you want to do is you want to solder eight in the bottom, cut the leads, then place and solder 16 on the top, or sorry, eight on the top. Solder eight in the bottom, solder, cut the leads, and do the same on the top. And from there, we'll solder our, our, four, one, our, our four 10K ohm resistors. So I'm gonna stop the video and I'm gonna show you um, the 100, 100 ohm resistors soldered here, and then I'm going to solder them here, and then I'm going to solder all four 10K ohm resistors. And they are labeled 10K R4, 10K R3, 10K R2, and 10K R1. So, soldered in my first eight 100 ohm resistors, soldered them into place, made sure every solder joint is proper, and I've cut away the leads with a wire cutter. So now, I'm just going to skip ahead, because we don't need to see me doing the top ones and the 10K ohm resistors. Just make sure you use the other eight 100 ohm resistors in these slots, and then your four 10K ohm resistors in these four slots. Solder them into place, make them nice and even on the board, no shorts, good solder joints, and next we will solder in our transistors and our socket. Okay, so as you can see, all the resistors are populated. Now, let's do the socket first. What you'll see on the left side of the socket is there's a little notch, and that's just an indicator. On the footprint right here, there's a little notch on the left as well. Make sure that from a bird's eye view, and from this, from this position, that the left side of the socket is facing the left side, or sorry, that the notch is facing the left side of the board. And once you've done that, what I like to do is take one finger, hold it down, and solder this pin and this pin to hold everything in place. Then what you want to do is you want to solder each lead individually and carefully ensuring that there are no shorts and that each solder joint is very strong. It's a very easy component to solder into place. You just want to make sure that there are no shorts, so, uh, solid solder joints, and that the little notch on the left side of the socket is facing the left side of the board. Why you ask? Because that's our orientation uh, indicator for our chip. Our chip also has a notch and that's we want that for that notch to face to the left side of the board from this perspective. If we turn that around we're gonna fry our chip so that's very important. Once that's soldered into place look at your transistors. There are four slots labeled T1, T2, T3, and T4 right here. Now you'll notice in the footprint there is a flat side and a curved side and on the transistor what you'll notice is there's a flat side and it actually has writing on it, and there's a curved side. And I mean, you might be, it might be difficult for you to see it here, but as you can see, it's teetering when I touch it because the curved side is on the back. Now, what we want to do is we want to make sure that from a bird's eye view, the transistors, the flat side of the transistor faces the flat side of the footprint. In this case, the back. Uh, if you reverse this, then your layers will not line up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to solder those in all their place. I'm going to give you a close-up of what it should look like and then we're going to move on to the switch and the capacitors. What I like to do is I like to place the transistors and solder one pin on each. And what the, what's the reason for that? So that I can make sure that from the top it's nice and neat and uniform. So if you solder one pin, yeah, it's easy for you to desolder if you need to. Now you don't need to do any desoldering anyway unless you have the orientation backwards. But in this case, you can move them around so it looks nice and uniform. These are four nicely placed transistors. And as you can see from this angle, the backs, the flat sides, are facing the flat bit on the footprint. Again, probably pretty difficult to see, but from a bird's eye view, the curved side are facing the curved side of the footprint and the flat side is facing the flat side on the footprint. 
These are four properly placed transistors. Socket is soldered, everything's hunky-dory. Finish soldering your transistors, and next we'll go on again to the capacitors and the switch. First of all, the capacitors. The 0.1 microfarad ceramic capacitor is not polarized. Both of the leads are the exact same length, and that goes in the uh, C1 slot labeled 0.1U C1, and you can place it in either way. Um, it doesn't matter, it's not polarized, just make sure that it's nicely down into the board, uh, soldered into place, no problems, one of the easier components to solder in. Now, the electrolytic capacitor. This is labeled C3 100U, the 100 microfarad electrolytic capacitor. Uh, what you'll notice is there is a long lead and a short lead. Just like the, uh, just like the LEDs, the long lead is positive, short lead is negative. Now, that, in the C3 slot right here, there is a positive uh, a plus sign right above the top hole. Make sure that your long lead goes in the top hole and your short lead goes in the bottom hole. Uh, if you reverse this and you power up, that uh, capacitor is going to pop, potentially destroy the traces on the board. Uh, it's, it, it can cause a whole bunch of problems. It can cause shorts. Make sure that the positive lead is in the top hole, which has the plus sign above it and your short lead goes in the bottom hole. Solder that into place. Now, the switch, let me just zoom in here. Uh, I'm sorry, should have just, there we go. What you'll notice is that on the footprint for the switch, there's a tiny little notch right here. It says on, off, and there's a little bump right here. That's just on the footprint. On one side of the switch, there's a little bump in the middle. On the, sorry, on the other side, it's just flat. Hopefully you can see that. So what we want to do is we want to make sure that that bump is facing the bottom side of the board from a bird's eye view. So we want to solder it in with the bump facing the bottom of the board. Now, what you're going to want to do is you're going to, it's going to be difficult for me to show you exactly how to do this. You're going to have to be patient when you do that when you place this component. Once it's in, it's uh, easy enough to solder. You will will need a fine tip soldering iron for this. So what I'm going to do Unfortunately, I'm gonna, it's going to be a little bit problematic showing you how to do this. I'm going to try my best. Uh, I'm probably going to try to zoom out a little bit. Pardon my, pardon my uh, reach here. What you have to do is what I like to do is you don't want to start from a tilt on either side. You want to basically line up the middle hole, the, the three pins in the middle with the three middle pins in the board. And once those are lined up, everything should pop in and it should stay flush to the board. It shouldn't move. You can shake it around, it's nice and tight, but getting all five of those holes into the board can be a little bit tricky. You need patience, you don't want to hurt the switch. Uh, place it in the off position, which is, from this perspective, to the left. And on the bottom of the board, we're going to want to solder all five pins. Now I'll give you a close up of those five pins. So this is why you're going to want a fine tip soldering iron. The outside pins, they are just, uh, they hold the switch in place. They are not, uh, they do not conduct any electricity. They are not a signal, they do not have a signal signal path. This is your on-off switch. So I'm actually going to solder this, and I'm hopefully that you can, I'm hoping that uh, the camera doesn't blur and that you can see me doing it. I'm going to start with the outer pins. I've got my fine tip soldering iron. Nice solder joint. Add a little bit more. Now those two are easy. If you are not careful, your inner pins can easily short each other. So what I do is I start from the right, I heat the pad with my soldering iron, add a little bit of solder, done. Then I go to the middle pin, do the same thing, done. And again to the last one, done. Now if you want, you can add more solder. I'm going to just for the sake of being thorough. and now you've soldered your switch into place. Five nice solder joints. Those three in the middle can be a little bit tricky. Again, you want to make sure that you have a nice soldering iron to complete those three pins in the middle, and those are the three pins that count. Next, we're going to do the five millimeter jack right here. Make sure that the jack side is facing the bottom of the board. It only fits in one way. It should pop nicely in, but from the bottom of the board, from the top, sorry, from the top of the board, you want to make sure it's nice and uniform. Um, and from the, you want to hold it into place with one finger, and on the bottom of the board you've got three holes. Now, 
what I, what I typically do is, is, first of all, you don't want to apply too much heat for too long because it is a plastic component. You will melt it. So what I like to do is I like to tip my soldering iron with a bunch of solder and I like to start in the bottom and just make a connection. And from there, it should be held into place once the solder cools. Test it, let go. Still there. From here, I like to, you, you basically, what I like to do anyway, is carefully do that to each of the four, each of the three pins. Just make sure there's a connection to all of them. Now you can stop there, but what I like to do is I like, I like to let it cool a little bit, and then I like to solder the secondary side of each hole so that there is a connection on both sides. And as you can see, that's done. I'll just do the bottom hole now. You will have your own method of doing this. You just want to make sure that you give the board a little bit of time to cool down because you are heating a plastic component. And lastly, sorry we're still on the screen, the side pin. Again, that takes practice. Just take your time. Don't heat it for too long. And that component is done. Lastly, we're going to do our 7805 5 volt regulator. The 5 volt regulator has a front and a back. The back is just a uh, grayish white. That's uh, essentially, that's just ground. Connects actually to the middle pin. And the front has right, it has a black uh, pad in the front and it has writing on it. It should say 7805. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to place that in our 7805 slot. This is our last main component of the board before we go back to the LED cube. So as you can see, the back of the footprint has white, and the front of the footprint doesn't. So what that means is I want to have the white backing facing the back of the board, and the front, with the writing on it, facing the bottom of the board from this perspective. So I'm going to place it all the way down with the front of the component facing the bottom of the board. I'm going to hold it, turn it around, and I'm going to bend one lead. And now I'm going to solder it. Now what I'd like to do is make sure that that lead is out a bit. There we go. And now you're just going to want to make sure that you have nice solid solder joints on all three pins. No shorting. If you gob your solder on, you will short. So just for the sake of being thorough, I will solder this just to give you an idea. Again, I know a lot of you won't need this portion, and some of you will. Uh, please just skip ahead if need be. This is the last main component of the processor board. Now we need to connect our cube and our, wire, our four wires. So all four pins are soldered. Now just neatly cut away each of the three pins right at the base. If you have a magnifying glass, just make sure that there are no shorts. You can also, after you've cut those, just to make things neat, you can reheat the solder joints. Not necessary, but you can do it just to be neat. So now let's get back to our LED cube. One last thing before we move on to the cube again. If you don't want to use the 5mm jack for power and you want to solder wires to connect your power, this bottom pin, the square pin of this 5mm jack, is ground. The one on the left is not used. It's just It just holds the jack in place. And the top, from this perspective, is your positive. So you want to place 7.5 volts to 12 volts DC on this top pin, solder a red wire, and DC ground, a black wire, to this bottom pin, just in case you don't have a 5mm jack and you want to use an external power supply that requires wires. By now you should have 16 rings of 4 LEDs connected uh, as we did in the beginning of the video. Now before we move any further, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to get out some needle nose pliers. And for this, you, you see some of these aren't perfect. Uh, for instance, this one. You want to make sure that they are as uniform as possible and that'll just take some adjustments with your hands they're pretty close but some of them aren't absolutely perfect now how your cube looks in the end depends entirely on the time you take in your patience you just you just need to be completely patient now for this part we're gonna need four rings of LEDs and our needle nose pliers now as you can see I'm hoping you can see on the common uh, negatives that are connected are on the bottom and I've got my positives on the upper side. So underneath is the common negative and on top is the common, or sorry, the singular positives. Now the idea here 
is that all of the common positives are facing down and what we want to do is after we've made our LED strings perfect is we want to essentially bend the end of each positive down and the idea for that is that what we're going to do is after it's bent down all four of them we're going to bring it over top of the next LED set and how, how that's going to work is the lead that's bent down a little bit should be bent down far enough to touch the next positive. So I'm going to do an example of one. You're going to want to do all of the bending first before doing any of the soldering. So I'm going to bend all 16 pins and then I'm going to do a close-up of the soldering. To give you an example on how to do a bend, what I like to do is I like to take the tips of my needle nose pliers and apply them directly to the end so that you can't see the, any of the bottom of the lead. Sorry, let me just... There we go. So I can't, I can still see the bottom of the lead. Now I can't. And as soon as I get that to there, what I want to do is do a perfect, hold the, hold the handle of the needle nose pliers so very steady and do a perfect bend at 90 degrees. Doesn't have to be perfect, but there's the bend. I'll do it to the second one. You can also go from a different angle if you'd like. Hopefully you can still see this. And 90 degree bend. Again, they don't have to be 100% perfect as long as your LED string looks perfect. And that should be more than enough. So now from a different angle, you can see the common negative on the bot is on the bottom and each of the positives have a 90 degree bend, give or take a little bit. So then double inspect it, make sure that all four LEDs are tested with your multimeter and go on to the next one. Do all four and then what we're going to do is we'll solder it together. With all the bending done, we've got the top of our LED bank, second from the top layer, second from the bottom layer, and bottom layer. Now I made a stupid mistake and I'm sorry for this, I'll make a note. This last layer, don't bend the bottoms. No problem, I'm gonna bend them back. Uh, and it's not really a big deal even if you do bend them and because these are actually going to be the pins that fit into the board. So before I move on, I'm gonna take that layer and I'm going to bend those leads back. Uh, but now let's look at how to solder each of these layers together. So this again, pay attention to detail. How you solder this together is going to completely impact the quality of your LED bank when done. So what I'm going to do is essentially all you really have to do is place the curved wires over top of the next layer. Make sure it's as uniform as possible. Now what I like to do typically is do a little, little bit of solder on this, on this pin just to tin it, line it up, apply some heat so that that one is connected, then come over and then apply some solder to this unit Make sure that everything's uniform before you continue on, then solder the middle pins, and then reflow the left and the right pins. So I'm going to do that, and I'll do a close-up so you can see how it looks. Before I show you a completed layer, just for the sake of being thorough, what I did was I soldered the rightmost wire, gave it a little bit of solder, not a great solder joint, I'm going to come back to it, and then what I did was I lined up the left pin, and to ensure that there was no gap between the wire and the LED, I held it down with my screwdriver to ensure that uh, it was fl the wire was flush to the LED. And that's very important because you don't want it to be tilted when you stand it up. So I've soldered those two. Now I'm going to solder these two wires because they're in place. Hopefully you can still see. And now I'm going to uh, reflow the rightmost. Sorry, I've got a piece of wire there. Hold that down, reflow, and I'll reflow this one. And that's done. You can check it with a magnifying glass. And the next thing we want to do, I'm just going to zoom out, is do the next to the next layer. Take your eight LEDs, place it over top of the next ring, line it up, make sure everything's hunky-dory, and follow the same steps. When you're done that, add your bottom layer, do the same thing, 
and again make sure that your bottom layer is not the leads are not bent because they will be fitted into the board once all four are together and I'm going to show you that in a second make sure everything's uniform if you need to make adjustments make adjustments don't apply too much heat at once to these pins because remember these LEDs are plastic and they essentially have little um, integrated circuits in each of them that you can damage with too much heat and after we're done a full layer we're going to do an LED test another LED test alright so I'm done not 100% perfect, but pretty darn good. I'm happy with it. Uh, again, how your cube comes out depends on the amount of patience, your soldering experience, etc. So I'm going to go back to diode testing mode. And all of our common negatives are on the left. So if I... I'm just going to get this out of the way because you don't need to see that. I'm going to touch the top left, or upper left, negative with my, with my uh, black probe and my positive to the bottom. So I'm going to hold my positive on the bottom because I've got all the positives connected in, the, in this line on the bottom. I'm going to touch all the negatives. Hunky dory. Next layer. All the positives on the second pin to my red. All the LEDs work. Continue on. everything is connected properly. If, uh, if an LED doesn't light up, you may have damaged it, or it's just not soldered in properly. If you get entire layers not connected, then either your common negatives or your common positives are not connected. So just to reiterate, all of the negatives on here now are connected. All the negatives on here are connected. All the negatives on here are connected. All the negatives on here are connected. All of the positives here are connected at the bottom. All of the positives here are connected here and here. So now what we want to do is we want to do this four more times. So do follow this, this same step, the same process, four more times with four more rings of four. And once you're done, we're in the home stretch. Then, actually, I consider it to be the most fun part of the entire assembly process. So I'm going to skip ahead, I'm going to build all four of these, and then we're going to assemble it into our board. So now we've got four full rows of 16, 64 LEDs. If you've te after you've tested all of your LEDs, it's time to move forward. Now you might notice, after you're done, looking at some of them, they might not be 100% horizontal as you'd like. And depending on the quality of your soldering, you might feel confident enough to just give a little bit of a bend to each of them to make it a little bit more... a little bit more uh, uh, horizontal. And after you do that, just in case, if you feel like doing that, you might want to check the LEDs one more time to ensure that you haven't broken any solder joints. You don't need to do that. My four LED rows are pretty good. You know, they're not 100% perfect, but it's hard to get perfection. Uh, unless you're willing to spend, you know, hours and hours making every single solder joint 100% perfect. Again, the quality of the cube itself is completely up to you. So now, the fun part. The part we've all been waiting for. Let's assemble our cube. At this point in time, it doesn't matter if you want to or not, you can place your chip in. You can do it right at the end if you'd like. I'm going to place it in right now. You do it whenever you want, just as long as you follow the directions. There's a notch on the left-hand side of the chip, and remember when we soldered in the socket, there's a notch on the left side of the socket. From this perspective, make sure that the notch on, this, on the, the programmed microcontroller is facing left. Now, getting this in, be careful and take your time. It's very important. Placing this in the socket can be a bit of a chore. What I typically do is I can go from the top, place the t rest of the top leads in first, or the bottom. You do whatever's comfortable for you. I'm going to place the top leads in first. Make sure that they're lined up, seem to be in all right. So then what you have to do is I like to lift it up just a little bit so that the top pins are just barely in the sockets, but they're there. And I use my thumbs to gently massage uh, the, bottom, the bottom leads in. And what you might find is after you do that, the top leads have come out a little bit. So again, just take your time back and forth until you get it perfect, until you, you're confident it is sitting pro properly in the socket. Once it's at that point, oh, I just about had it there, it's, it'll be in. As you can see, it's sitting in it properly. It's not pushed in yet, but all the leads are in there. Then simply place your thumbs on both sides and push down. Make sure that no pins are bent, 
from the top in that it's sitting in properly from the side. My furnace just went off, sorry about that. I'm gonna continue on with the video. Now, you don't have to take your screws and nuts out if you don't want to for this part. I take them out because it's a little bit easier. Uh, at least I find it to be a little bit easier. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna assemble from left to right. And we're gonna take one of our rows of 16 and we're gonna place it on the left hand side. We're gonna line up all of the common positives with all of the common negatives facing towards you and we're going to line those up with, with uh, holes B4, B5, B6, and B7. B4, B5, B6, and B7. You're going to line those up and place them in. Now here's a cheat. You have the board, you have the board uh, against, against the, the surface that you're soldering on. You don't have to solder from the bottom of the board. You can solder from the top if you'd like. The pads are very, very large. So I can take my soldering iron and I can solder it there. That is up to you. You can hold it in place from the top if you'd like, but I'm going to solder it in from the bottom. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to solder in one lead first. Make a nice solder joint. Now, I'm going to, once that cools, you don't want to burn yourself. Assuming all of the holes are lined up, I'm going to just bend it in a little bit so that, and I'm looking at it on, a, on level to make sure that it's nice and vertical and that looks pretty good you can make final adjustments later now I'm going to solder in again I'm hoping you can see this solder in the rest again you do this however you'd like this is just how I'm doing it for this specific video I've done it from top I've done it from bottom And that's that. So now, let's have a quick look. I'm not sure how well you can see this. I'm going to try to zoom in here. Looks good. Looks good. Sorry about that. Looks hunky-dory. So as you can see, all the common negatives are facing the front of the board. And what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to follow the same steps with the rest of them. Place layer 2 in the next four holes, so B0, B1, B2, and B3. Solder from the top or the bottom. You just want to make sure that they're lined up and that they're properly soldered into the holes. If you don't, you're going to have problems. So there, that's in. I'm going to solder that into place. I'm going to solder the first pin towards me and then I'm going to make my adjustments. Then I'm going to do that with the other two rings of uh, 16 LEDs. Once I'm done that, We'll follow the next step. With the second layer in, I'm going to show you a quick test or a, a, a quick trick that I've, I just figured out. If you take a screwdriver, if you're going to have to do bending to make sure that they're all perfectly the way you want them, take a screwdriver, I'm hoping you can see this, from the bottom and just gently from the bottom pins that are soldered, massage them, bend them a bit in whichever direction you please, left or right. Just push or pull. Do it very gently. Don't do it from the middle layers because if you do that you can wreck your solder joints. And then if you put your cube together and you have a bad solder joint, it's much more difficult to go in through a cube of 64 LEDs with your soldering iron. So as you go along, just to make sure, you can continually do that diode test. Just to show you as we, just to show you one more time, uh, diode test, I can set it up, all my common positives, or common negatives are on the side, I just have to test Test from uh, left to right. No bad solder joints. So you can continually do that as you go along just to make sure. It's, you know, practice makes perfect and it better be safe than sorry. So I'm going to solder in the next two rows and then we're going to follow the next step and we're almost done. I wouldn't call it perfection, but I'd call it pretty darn good. We've got two more big steps and then we're done. We're ready to test it. Now, you notice that all we've, we've soldered in all of our common positives to the board, but now we've got our our common negatives per layer, and they're just sticking out. And there's two things we can do here. If you have some very fine wire at home, oh, and uh, do not use this fine wire for this step. This is saved for the last step. That's included with the kit. Uh, if you have some very fine wire at home, what you can do 
is from the back, you can solder all of the common negatives together. So all for the top layer of 16, solder all the common negatives together. All the common negatives together for every layer. You can do it from the front, but it's not as pretty. However, the main way to do this, the, uh, the, speci the, the way that it's meant to be done, is to take this common negative and connect, to so bend it over at, not, uh, I should say, negative 90 degrees this way, to connect here. Take this common negative, bend it over, and connect it here. Take this common negative, bend it over, and connect it to here. And then get rid of this last common negative. Now, if you find that you're just barely, you're not making the, the, enough length, just use an, a piece of your resi uh, old resistor lead to fi fix the gap. So I'm going to solder the top, let's look at this from a top level, uh, second level, third level, fourth level, or rather, one, two, three, four. This is the top level. We're going to start with the top level and go down. You can start with the bottom layer and go up if you'd like, but I'm just going to start with the top layer. I'm going to solder them all together and... Uh, so all of the negatives on the top layer of 16 will be connected together. I'll show you what I mean in case uh, I'm being a bit ambiguous and uh, then we'll move on. Now because it's too difficult to just bend these, even with needle nose pliers, over to the left and over to the left, you can still do that but I find it's, more di it's too difficult without uh, damaging the look of the cube and you don't want to do that after how much time you've spent on it so as you can see I've just taken resistor uh, resistor leads uh, scrap of resistor leads and I've laid them across here and soldered it now in order to, in order to test to make sure that you've made a proper connection and I realize it's, it's pretty difficult to see because of all the LEDs what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my continuity tester I was going to test for shorts and we're going to test the back can you see that I'm testing the back common negative and the back back left common negative and the back right and I should see a short and I see a short so the common all of the common negatives are connected together every single one in the front so we're going to do follow that step three more times and to cut off the leads very gently with your wire cutters and we're going to make shorts across each layer so that every layer has a common negative Take your time, uh, it will look good. You can do this from the back if you'd like to make it look more cosmetically nice from the front. It's uh, completely up to you how you do this, but you gotta know that all the negatives on every layer need to be connected together. You don't want this layer connected to this layer because we're gonna control each layer individually. Just make sure that all each, each layer has its own common negative. And after you're done that, we're gonna go on to the final step and then we're gonna test. It's kinda nice if you can do it from the back, but as you can see, Common ground, or all of the grounds on layer one are connected. All of the negatives, sorry, on layer one are, are connected. All of the negatives on layer two are connected. Layer three and layer four. So now, what we have to do is we have to connect these layers, these common negatives from every layer to the board. How do we do that? Remember that little piece of wire that was included? We're gonna cut that into four different pieces and we're gonna solder to these four pads right here. I'm gonna show a close up in just a second. These pads are labeled 1, 2, 3, and 4. And we're going to use wires to connect to the layers. So this is layer 1, bottom layer, layer 2, layer 3, and layer 4. We're going to connect a small wire, make sure it's cut so that it's very small and, not, and, uh, and hidden. And we're going to wire it up here and connect right here on this corner right here. And that is layer 1. That is your layer 1 control. Next, take a wire from and solder to pad 2 and bring it up the side and connect to uh, pad uh, right here sorry to connect to layer two connect a wire from pad three here and lastly uh, pad four to the top uh, to the top side here uh, I'm going to show you what it looks like in just a second uh, but you want to make sure that your wires are cut appropriately. You don't want to have any extra lying around. You want to have it as concealed as humanly possible. If you're feeling up to it, you can even wire them up through the inside so they're more concealed. But keep in mind there's only a limited amount of wire. So make your make your cuts and your, solder, uh, your soldering uh, very precision. That's very important. So I'll solder the first two layers. I'll show you what my wires look like and, and then you can solder the last two and we'll test it. I realize it's a bit camouflaged. But I've got my wires connected, pad 1 right here, pad 2 right here, pad 3 right here, pad 4 right here. Again, the t if you take the time to measure out the wires, you make it look really nice. You can't even see the wires really because of the 
because this specific cube is red. Um, you can use your own wire if you'd like, but there is uh, uh, some red wire included. In any case, the AC to, D to DC adapter that's included has a jack. That is a 120 volts to 240 volts AC, 50 slash 60 hertz, to 9 volts uh, DC at 1 amp. And you plug that into the wall, plug that in here. You've got your uh, switch set to off, so switch set left. I'll plug it in and we'll see if uh, I made any mistakes. Turn it on. Inspect for LEDs that are not functioning. That looks good. If an LED is not functioning, you, uh, you likely had a solder break while you were in, uh, while you were assembling. Wow, this looks really nice. I'm hoping my camera picks it up uh, properly. I'm gonna turn off the light just so that you can get a better look at it in the dark. Hopefully, it looks better in the dark with the camera. It looks great from here, very vibrant. Oh yeah, looks good. So, you, I make the electronics, you make the cube. Thanks for pledging to my Kickstarter. This will be available soon at uh, engineeringshop.com and electroniclessons.com. If you're a paintball enthusiast or escape room enthusiast, check us out at uh, paintballprops.com. Thanks for watching, everyone. I hope this uh, video helped you assemble your project.